one of the old comedians. As we've been uh, previously labeled, we have the, the old, tiring, sort of aging comedians. We have the new ones that are coming on, they've got flat beer. But before you do that, you've got to put up with the old ones. It's sort of like, the, the sort of like, like an old horse that was really, it was really quite good before. It did a lot of Grand Nationals, but gradually you have to sort of take it out to the pasture and it wanders around for a bit and then it, it goes, oh, my leg hurts. And it's just like, oh, terrible, terrible shame. <laughs> but if I'm not funny, then um, please laugh, because you laugh, but I'm going to be shocked. Um, <laughs> how is that a joke? <laughs> I'm going to be shocked. <laughs> oh, the humour of dictators everywhere. Um, uh, yeah, no, I'm, not, I'm here to sort of to tell you jokes. Sort of to tell you jokes. Um, yeah, and it's, 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 um, it's quite sort of difficult, um, because you've got to think of jokes. And I did think of a joke, one. It's not very good. <laughs> so you've got you to sort of humour me. Uh, okay, so okay, here it goes. Um, what did George Wakeman do when he couldn't think of a joke? It's a rhetorical question, so any smart ass is shut Masturbate. <laughs> okay, engaging reaction here. <laughs> Plausible, not funny. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it's not the end of the joke, it's something to come back. Because sometimes uh, I can't think of a joke 10, 15 times a day. <laughs> sometimes I sit at home furiously not thinking of a joke. <laughs> On one occasion I actually got a repetitive strain disorder from not thinking of a joke. It's very difficult. There is actually a slight problem with that, apart from the repetitive strain and everything. Um, most of the time when I'm not thinking of a joke, I'm, I'm doing it in my room. Most. <laughs> Sometimes I just walk along the street. And... <laughs> Most. Thank you for clarifying. Um, but but um, there's a problem with that because my room is um, is, is on the first floor, and I live uh, overlooking a main road, which puts me at bus level. <laughs> so sometimes I'm there, not thinking of jokes, and then just like, a... and the guys just look around in the bus. Fucking. <laughs> It's really bad in the mornings when you're kind of um, you're getting up and it's that kind of it's the sun shining and you're like ah in your birthday suit you know completely sort of in the all together. Now falling down like that was my opportunity to think about what I was going to say next, but it didn't work. So, uh, so oh yeah, no, I remember. Oh, I do still need that. Yeah, well done. Um, yeah, no, you, know, you never realise you're having a conversation, sorry, you ever realise you're having a conversation with someone, and then they're just sort of not there anymore. People <laughs> <laughs> are going, no, not so much. Usually people stick around with my conversations. I don't have that sort of thing, so it's quite nice in this scenario, because everyone sort of has to stay, because I can see them moving, so they go, I oh, we should stop talking about this. But um, I was having this the other day, and um, there was a guy with uh, some chips, a friend of mine, and, um, and I found myself about to sneeze. And you don't really want to sneeze all over your friend's chips. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's good to see you. Good to you too. Thanks. Um, but so I just kind of, I just went, I went. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 they, and they, sorry, and they said, um, oh, don't sneeze on my chips. I'm like, I clearly have And my mind works in some strange ways because I thought at this point it would be a good opportunity to do a great time for a Darth Vader impression. It's a weak old man. It's good, isn't it? Very good. And they're gone. And uh, I realised like, sometimes conversations can be horrendously bad. I was like, well, you know, I'm sure there are much better Darth Vader impersonators around. Um, but um, I have this other thing. Um, when the people can't actually get away, much like you guys, um, when someone yawns in the middle of a conversation, but they're so polite, and they do, they do this, they go, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they look like they're having a stroke. <laughs> then your mind just goes, the three signs, what three signs have you got to watch? <laughs> that, that'll be one. I, I realise I am teetering on bad taste at the moment, but, um, but Evan Cox is not on this week, so I thought that was a good one. Good shout out, and I'm going to get shot later. But we all knew that, so carrying on. Um, but it, can you imagine if your conversation did that? It just kind of like, oh, so quantum physics. 
the faster you act, the more the person you love you save. Yeah, but that's, that's just sort of, I want to finish my conversation first, if you don't mind. But, um, yeah, so that's the way my mind works. Because um, I grew up with Disney, uh, and uh, I'm guessing some of you might have done it as well, so that's not an excuse. But who, who, who watched a lot of Disney films when they were growing up? Hey! <laughs> and then you ruined my life. But um, no, I, I, my, my favourite, I think, are there any guys here whose joint favourite Disney films are not The Lion King and Aladdin? No, there's some hissing tires, but there's no guy willing <laughs> to admit that. No, I find that everyone's, every, every guy is just coming up, oh, it's either Lion King or Aladdin, or it's like, oh, I can't decide. And I, I, got, I, I said this the other day to someone, and I said, my top three are like kind of Lion King, Aladdin, and, um, and Toy Story. And they got booed. I was like, what's wrong with Toy Story? Anyway, I don't know. No one's like, there's nothing wrong with the George. Carry on your set. It's not going as well if you carry on talking about this. Fine. But, um, but I'm not going to be brilliant because the gene, right? You can have anything you want. You could have like a, an infinite supply of ginger beer and mango and chutney. That'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? <laughs> and we all know why, um, why the Lion King is good. And that is, of course, Nala. <laughs> and it, it applies to women as well. I didn't realise this until someone came up and told me. But, um, and then, they've come close to And basically, now I know she's a lioness. <laughs> but you do find yourself kind of going. Oh. <laughs> Elton John's going away. Like, can you feel the love tonight? You're like, surprise me, Elton. Yes, I can. I'm trying to think it. Come to the come to the Serengeti eyes. Just kind of. Ooh. But um, I've got a favourite character in, uh, in The Lion King, and that is the, uh, the infamous Scar. You know, the lion that is sort of eternally covered in poo. <laughs> Even though everyone else from his gene pool is a different colour, he's just kind of, I like being this way. <laughs> I have one question for you. What did they call him before the whole Scar business? <laughs> the other one. <laughs> What's the one we're not proud of? I don't know. It's a boy. Can you imagine them just coming over like, Mother, please, just, just give me a name. It's really difficult, you know, I mean, and the parents just going, well, you know, you know, Scar, I mean, it's, it's, it's very hard to name children. Hard. You realise my brother's name is Move fucking fast. <laughs> I'm happy with John. Steve, Alvin, I don't know, I don't give a shit. Probably not Alvin, wouldn't work, it's like, Simba. Yes, Alvin. <laughs> just mother, anything for me to... To stop going up to Pride of Lionesses and just going like, Hello, what's your name? Oh, well, I'm, I'm Noah, what's your name? <laughs> I got nothing, what are you going to say? Well, look, um, look, it's really difficult. Mufasa was the firstborn. Mufasa means firstborn, perhaps. Uh, <laughs> um, and, uh, and you've got no sort of distinguishing features. So, um, distinguishing features, mother. <laughs> You want distinguishing features, I'll give you a distinguishing feature. Poor oh, fucking self, it'll be horrible. Um, where am I going with it? I don't know. Um, but um, it's, always, it's always brilliant having, uh, having people come to see uh, Monkshine. Because live art is something that is <coughs> art. Just talking about wanking in front of the bus is not a thing. <laughs> it's a very good sort of art. You, know, very good. you can see the point where my sort of proverbial uh, reign is going to be low. It's like, come on, George, come on, George. <laughs> But, um, but no, oh, and, and um, it's got a huge power, and so I'm, I'm massively grateful for all of you for coming. And I, I just wanted to share one thing before I left about um, the power of, of art on people. Um, because I was walking on the South Bank uh, a few months ago, and uh, you know they've got those, uh, those big Salvador Dali sculptures, you know, the sort of things like the, 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 the melting clocks and the big elephants and stuff. The man, no, they do. It is on the South Bank. Yeah, right by the London Square. Yeah, it's beautiful. And, um, and, and I, I, I love that, I, I love all that sort of stuff. But um, it's amazing to see the power of it on someone who probably hasn't seen that before. Because the melting clock's like, oh my god, what is that? And I was watching this, this, this little kid was walking along, this little girl. And she's just walking along, kind of just looking away. And she turns to uh, look at one of these things, and she's just... <laughs> and that's it. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.